What is wrong with this guy? I wouldn't have thought you a soap man. She clearly wants it, okay? She's the cuter of the two. She's all legs and teen spirit. I don't know. She seems a little cold to me. She's fiery. She's Iceland. She's like a volcano under ice. She's the source of all geysers. He's crazy if he can't see that. Maybe he's just a little immature, you know? Charming in his own way. Jumper, you pinhead! Look at him. He talks and he talks. It's like he gets paid by the word. He says ten things when he means one. He goes on and on and on. Blah, blah, blah. He drinks sleep. He won't stop talking. He babbles. Sounds familiar. Look, they can't get together, Trevor. The show would be over. Oh, fine by me. You know what I don't get? You claim to be Cupid. You have no reservations about sharing your views on love, yet you say you have never fallen in love yourself. That takes chutzpah. <sighs> chutzpah. Stephen Hawking is 56 years old. Sequitur, please. People line up to buy his book about the dawn of time. No one questions his wisdom. Well, he devoted his life to research. So have I. Goddesses, nymphs, Amazons. I am personally responsible for the premature retirement of half a dozen of Diana's Vestal Virgins. You must be proud. Sounds interesting. Yeah. See you later. Hey, if I was going to fall in love, don't you think it would have happened already? I don't know. Bye-bye. Talk less, sir. Otherwise... I play a good game, but not as good as you. I can be a little cold, but you can be so cruel. I'm not made of brick, I'm not made of stone, but I have you fooled enough to take me on. I stumble and fall, baby, under it all. I want a human on the inside. His delusion that he is, in fact, Cupid, the Roman god of love, remains fixed. Well, he's not too fussy about the whole Greek-Roman split, so... In any case, he was released because, according to the reports you filed, he'd overcome his delusional state. Ah, this is Dr. Ian Frechette. Have you had the pleasure? I know who Dr. Frechette is, of course. Thank you. Well, I also know who Dr. Jekyll is. Ah, you disapprove of me. Well, I guess I don't buy into your philosophy of when in doubt, Medicaid. Dr. Frechette has identified Trevor Hale as a perfect test candidate in his latest research. Thoroxolotazine B. You familiar with my work? Thorax B hasn't even shown consistent results in physiological disorders. Trevor Hale's mental problems are psychological. I disagree. All evidence points toward a degenerative schizophrenia. Except there has been no degeneration. Furthermore, he poses no threat to himself or others, so lobotomizing... Dr. Allen... Excuse me! And, and chemically castrating him with that drug is irresponsible. I am fully conversant with the patient's file. I wrote his file. Well, you report that Mr. Hale abstains from all sexual contact anyway. Trevor is convinced if he has sex with a mortal, he'll cease to be a god. And when he finally succumbs to his sex drive, and he will, he'll have to confront that paradox. And how do you know he even has a sex drive? I've seen him dance. Well, dancing aside, Claire, is it possible that Trevor's charm and rather appealing worldview have affected your objectivity? No. Mr. Hale's delusion is biochemical in origin. My drug will cure him. <laughs> Thorax B will actually prevent Trevor from regaining his sanity. Sorry, Claire. I'm gonna have to think on this one. Wear your beepers. I'll be in touch. Now for our seventh performer, we have Mike on the left singing a of his own composition. I want to thank all my uh, all right, uh, my fans for coming. Uh, uh,
their phallic delusions. You ever get tired of psychoanalyzing? Now that you mention it, I am a bit windy. You know, there's something wrong with phallic. The Iliad was phallic. What? You know, the walled city, the horse thrusting its way through the gate, and finally, um, finally delivering its pain. There it is. There it is. Tripping, leaping, laughing, roving amongst the elfin throng proclaims the queen of fairies sits a woving her bridal gown. She's quite a dame. The magic hour quick approaches. The masses drive their coat. So, what can you tell us about Abby Puff and stuff up there? Yeah, hi, it's Claire. Uh, I'm expecting a very important message from Dr. Greeley. Nothing? Okay, thank you. I was way better than this guy. His gun is a coat, but he favors his knife, which is long, jagged, sharp, and rusty. He belches and burps in a French kiss your wife. And give her back all bent and musty. Yole, yeah. Yole. Oh, I should have just gone home. Oh, come on, Claire, play with us. It's fun. You know what that is? That Duchess C and G. Back and forth the whole day. Back and forth. Cowboy Irwin up there is repressing a memory of a milking gone bad. <laughs> and now for our. Fifteenth performer, Sophie Gill on guitar. She's a cutie. You can run her. It's better to do less of what is bad and more of what is good. That's the way I've always looked at things. So I've been wow. shaking it, busting it. Yeah, well, pretty good. Awesome. If you like that kind of thing. She's great. Ever since I purchased my first six string. Oh, and I've been doing laundry to support the laundry list. I've been working out night times, weekends, and work days that I have missed. And sometimes it all gets well, too me. Damn. Something to get me pissed. But it's all right. Well, I've been in the same place for so long I just can't wait to bust it out and finally hit the big time Oh, and I know with that guy in a magazine I've got a date It's just a question of right place, right time Oh, and I hear the folkies as they talk Saying, man, that girl could really sing those blues. Now there's a woman who needs a good man. Now there's a woman who had a good man and lost him. Eyes and see the truth inside the cracks. It's better to do less of what is bad and more of what is good. Huge. My entourage is out right now tracking down this Malaysian bottled water I like. <laughs> <laughs> and that you signed a record deal? Yeah, I'm supposed to be in the studio right now spinning pain and isolation into gold. How does that work? <laughs> I decided I needed a little R&R &R instead. First album, you already playing hooky. Same old Sophie. You're acting like my dad. Same old Albert. You know, the record company tracked me down. They sent a limo to come pick me up. They know how I hate to fly. Since when? You just stalled. So, given the nagging, you guys must go way back, which is very interesting. Interesting how? Well, uh, Claire has a theory. Trevor, you know, 
Well, no, about the song that you were playing. She thinks it's about a dream boat you loved and lost. And you were very dreamy. And that little field copping session that you guys had. Albert? Right there. Yeah, I was thinking. He's just one of the nameless, faceless drones I use to satisfy my voracious sexual appetite. <laughs> Count me in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we were musical theater geeks together back at the Fine Arts Magnet. Wow, Pals, wow, that's wow. all. And Sophie used to write two-thirds of a musical, decided it wasn't perfect, and then we'd end up doing Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> Not a whole lot of parts for me in that. When I'm 40, will you please stop giving me a hard time about that? Listen, will you tell Claire she's wrong, please? Claire, you're wrong. What was she wrong about? Your song. I, I thought it was about love gone bad. You know, you know what? He is right, and you are wrong. Thank you. Love, I don't believe in it. I don't touch the stuff. Oh, well, let's not get carried away, young lady. Forgive me for bar. crying, but you've never told someone that you loved them? No. Well, once. But I really don't think it counts. I was 13, and there was this neighbor boy. It never occurred to me then. Uh, you're right or my right? The car's right, honey. Oh. I can't, it's on kid proof. But the way Lister and I felt about each other must have scared my parents to death. They were probably relieved when we moved away. Just a little bit, please. Okay, we gotta go, Houston. So they didn't even give us a proper chance to say goodbye. I got you a present, Gil, so you won't forget it. I didn't get you anything, Lister. We gotta make some time here, kids. Window's coming up. I gave him the only thing I could think of, my bicycle key. When we pulled away, I thought I'd never see him again. So I told him how I felt, as if I knew. You want to see something funny? From Paul? I don't know. It has kitsch value. Let's go find him. No. What? This is, the, this is the only guy she's loved. She's still wearing this locket. Look, since then, no one has melted the butter, raged the waters, unlocked the potential. You want to know why? Uh, because she suppressed her little rock star feelings. That's why. Repressed. Thank you. I'm not agreeing with you, Trevor. I'm helping with the vocabulary. Whatever. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Claire. It's Milton. Milton! Great. So, I guess you've come to a decision? Dr. Frechette presented a solid case that your Mr. Hale is an ideal candidate. Of course he is. Trevor has no family to protest. Well, there's been no improvement in his condition. Perhaps it's time for more radical treatment. Look, aside from his delusion, he's holding a job, he is forming interpersonal relationships, and... I find it hard to believe that a delusion this entrenched hasn't caused harm to either the patient or to others. Look, he does no more harm than a persistent friend dying to set you up. Well, that's the part you see. You know something I don't? You're around Mr. Hale only a few hours a week. Isn't it possible that he's on his best behavior during that time? Hmm, there's a scary thought. <laughs> well, but one we have to consider. The hospital board is inclined to hand Trevor over to Frechette, and Frechette is willing to assume liability for the patient. Yes, of course he is, because under Frechette's care, Trevor will end up like a cabbage. And in the hospital's way of thinking, safe. Milton, what if I could just... No, no. You can't afford to accept personal liability for a delusional patient loose on the streets. We're talking about putting a man on a drug that will fundamentally change his personality. Who he is. And we're doing all of this because of what we suspect he may be doing when we're not present. And you're going to... Be present. Give me some time. We're talking about your reputation, your career. All right, sometime, Claire, but not much. Thank you. Yes, road trip. You need to jump back into this. Well, are you kidding me? This guy will be thrilled to see you. I, I would want you back in my life. Sophie has to go to Los Angeles to record a record. Claire, you're the expert. Would you tell Trevor that it's a stupid idea? Don't ask her. You know what she's going to say. I think we should do it. We. Oui. Trevor and two friends to arrive. 
The search for an old sweetheart will provide ample opportunity to subtly observe Trevor without his knowledge. That's right, good citizens. It's International Hug a Stranger Day. It is time to hug it out, you little freak. Devin Juice, no code. We'll be back to pick you up your freak. Hello. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hello. Although subtle isn't the first thing that occurs when you think of Trevor. So. Your seat's in the back. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Very much. Hello, Claire. You brought sustenance for us. How nice. Very civilized of you. Very nice. Listen, did you use the facilities before you left? That's very... Listen, did you turn off the oven? All right, buckle in, young lady. You don't want to bounce around. My man, heads up. I'll accept nothing less than the 60 knots. I want to crack an iceberg. I love the feeling of shaved ice in the morning. Smells like victory. Let's get into it. Sophie, your record company must love you. Oh, yes, they say I appeal to a desirable demographic. Woo, TV, wet bar, you got everything. This is a lovely little love bucket. Man, you want a roommate? Careful what you answer. It's like inviting a vampire across your threshold. Hey, does this fall out into a bed or something? <laughs> Come hey, Excellent. I'm not. I'm not. Trevor has to sit next to the controls. Yeah, apparently I have my Captain Kirk complex that I have to get over, right? And I had to push all the right buttons. Hey, you guys, I picked up some travel brochures at the hotel. Road trip options. World's largest tinker toy town. Heroes of the Prohibition Wax Museum, which you would like. Mm, look at that. And some place called Snake Farm. Oh, yeah, hold Snake on there, Farm. Dorothy. You, me, Scarecrow, and Tin Woman here are on our way to see the wonderful Lister of Oakville, Wisconsin, oh. who, incidentally, is still listed at the same address. I checked. Oh, no. You know, I'm really excited about the road trip, but uh, why, why do we have to find this guy, Paul, 15 years later? Well, because he was your first romance, the only guy you ever loved. That's powerful stuff. Guaranteed fireworks, everlasting devotion. Even the shriek here said so. I never said that, Trevor. Let's rewind to last night. <laughs> I think we should do it. Or, or were you just coming on to me? But look, Trevor. Oh, that would be ugly. Oh, no, 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 no. Make it stop, make it stop, me. make it stop. First loves are important. That's mm -hmm. where we establish later courtship patterns. Later courtship patterns. That's sexy. That's like a good typing class. Okay, okay. That's... This is how I see the reunion. Awkward reintroduction, more belly, less hair, black socks with sneakers, kids riding around in big wheels, a few laughs after the ice is broken. Nice enough guy, but not the magic boy you remember. So what's the point? Well, snake farm. Snake farm. The point is, the point is, you may have subconsciously elevated Paul to such a level that no present-day suitor stands a chance. You you want to move on, but you can't because you haven't resolved the trauma you felt in the truncated breakup of that formative relationship. Go, girl, work that hoodoo, voodoo, psycho, momo, jumbo, mojo. Can I get a witness? She's I'd buy a vowel pack. <laughs> what the hell is she talking about? She's a psychiatrist. Psychologist. It's like the difference between cook and chef. I was, I was a pre-teen girl, Trevor, at one time. Were you? Yeah, only think about it. There was a time when I had a real nice okay. little... When I was a girl, right. my parents used to send me to camp every summer. Oh! Yeah, camp. Camp Mississauga. <laughs> it ran on the gold star system, so if you amassed enough gold stars, you got more free time. This one boy, Mark something, he never got any free time because he wouldn't or couldn't play by the rules. Not that he cared. So, how many gold stars are you up to? I don't know. Triple digits? Maybe. Camp's supposed to be fun. They make it like school. What do you like? Old-fashioned cherry snow cones. X-Men, the talking heads. Tree forts you build yourself. Staying up late. Swimming naked. Skipping school. I like lots of things. Well, maybe I'll see you at the campfire tonight? I'm confined to my cabin. I told Counselor Rick that if he wore shorts any tighter, he'd accidentally sterilize his grandchildren. That's when I felt this pang. Pang, huh? It's like the female equivalent of a swing. At that moment, Mark became something more to me. I don't know what exactly, but more than the cute boy who couldn't get anything right. Jeez. Donuts, Cheetos, moon pies. Why don't you just bring big dollops of deep fried lard? They're road snacks. I don't eat them at home. You know what your problem is? Uh, ever since Mark, every guy that you have a pang for has to be some misfit that you can help. It's her, it's her Wonder Woman complex. That, that wasn't the point of the story. This first love therapy is bitching, isn't it? The point of the story was that you don't see love coming. Sort of. Partially, yeah. I never thought of, of Paul as anything but my buddy next door. Until one day we were sitting in front of his house, discussing some totally innocent subject. Hey, Gil, thinking about getting a tattoo. Don't those hurt? Oh, yeah. A lot. And his little brother, Brian, the pest, tried to pry us That's apart okay. as usual. Hey, I was supposed to ask you if you want to be on Rick Frame's team or Jeff Brown's. You go on ahead. But they only let me play if we play together. We're brothers, not Siamese twins. You can play without me. We'll give you your own team if you want. Want me to ask? N-O spells get out of my face, hoser. 
Lister turned down a game of football? This was big. So, Lister, where are you gonna get this tattoo? Right about here. Tasmanian double me here, the Van Halen symbol. I mean, I'd seen Paul a thousand times without his shirt on. Maybe it was because he turned the other guys down, but this time I was looking. You know what? Scratch the caboose. I'm gonna get another derailleur and a side of bacon. Wanna keep going? Order from the lunch menu straight on through dinner? <laughs> so did Paul ever get his tattoo? Yeah, I drew one on his shoulder with a black magic marker. Semi-permanent. Skull? How'd you know? My fingers shook when oh. I drew on you a skull so black on golden skin that smelled new. That was off your first demo. Can you put that gentleman's breakfast on my bill, please? Tables are outside my jurisdiction, honey bunch. Please, I really appreciate it. He gave me some really sound financial advice. Really? He may be our limo driver, but the man's a genius. Very lonely genius. Little recaboose, little recaboose, little recaboose behind the train. I'll have what he's having. What? It's been uh, two hours now, and this is the first time Trevor has even acted like Cupid. He's trying to match up the limo driver with the truck stop waitress. By chemically removing his sex drive and rendering him psychologically malleable, Thorax B will end Trevor's psychotic delusions. Of course, recommitment to a secure psychiatric facility will be necessary. On the basis of cold hard fact alone, these actions may be indicated. But isn't that like using a hammer to swat flies? More importantly, whatever psychological trauma that caused his delusion in the first place will remain untreated. And as for doing harm to either himself or others, if a friendly exchange of phone numbers is cause for alarm, then I guess this guy could be dangerous. Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, you guys finish breakfast, I'm gonna be in the car, okay? What's up? Nothing. I, I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna, I gotta. That's a first. What? Man, on this looks mortal. Staring me down. Making a list, checking it twice, gonna find out who's crazy and nice. I'm balancing my checkbook. Uh -huh, it's all the same to you. People, numbers, columns. You got your debit people and you got your credit people. If you're slotted into the debit column, next thing you know, it's a foreclosure. You're not a real whiz in the financial department. Are you? You're either a one or you're a zero. Well, listen, baby, you cannot slot me into a column. Did you get a letter from the IRS or something? There's something more to life than numbers. What if I'm a letter, you know? I mean, what would you do without the 24 letters in the alphabet? 26 letters in the alphabet, Trevor. There you go. Who else would take the trouble of counting all the letters in the alphabet except for the numbers lady? I got him going. The advent of a cashless economy. Bit of advice. Be a number, don't be a letter, because the alpha and the omega are losers in her world. Letters are losers? You're not a loser, Trevor. If you were a loser, I would have already dated you. <laughs> That's the truth, she would have. <laughs> Remember the drummer? Oh, God. He found the female orgasm unattractive. And then there was the vegan folk singer who kept a strict accounting of who paid for what and he liked to settle weekly. <laughs> and don't forget about the promoter. Oh, yeah, he promoted himself to Svengali. And then there was the manager who sold my car and then disappeared. She's talking about debits. How did you end up with these guys? I don't know. I, I think I was really impressed with the ease in which they can make me feel ordinary and undesirable. So you wanted to prove to them that you were worthy of their respect, their love? Yeah, if you can't get a neurotic loser to admire you, then you're really screwed. Of course, you don't have to hang in for the long run with the guy. <laughs> it's doomed from the beginning. Makes breaking up a lot easier. 
And if I ever found anybody worth the long run, I'd hang in. Well, sometimes you gotta give people a chance to show what they got inside. Like you? Like Jackie Goodley. Now, you might find it hard to believe, but in junior high, I was small for my age, uncoordinated, and bad at sports. And Jackie, she was shy. She thought all the other girls were prettier than her. Two misfits. Of course we found each other. Now, all Jackie wanted was to be Gladys Knight, and all I wanted was for Jackie to be happy, so I was her pit. Now, it was my idea for her to audition for the school play. And guess what? She knocked them dead. I, mean, I, I nearly burst with pride. But she had the best voice in the whole school. And the reason I auditioned was moral support. You got the part, and Jackie didn't. No, 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 not at all. We both got parts. It was an exciting day. That is the sweetest story. Yeah, but... On behalf of all of the women in the Western Hemisphere, champ, we are not worthy. The point I was trying to make is that... On behalf of all the men, you suck. Forget it. An obvious antagonism towards me, the subject has in no way indicated that he would, under any circumstances, place his perceived mission above the well-being of the people he intends to help. At this moment, he is presenting himself as the rock star Dave Matthews to a group of very gullible locals. Even in the throes of a delusion, Trevor is capable of discerning between fantasy and reality in day-to-day -day life. Such a marked sense of fun is virtually unheard of in other cases of delusion. What? What is it? My hair? Maybe maybe my shoes? Are you going to tell me that people are like shoes in some way in the kingdom of shoes, the boot is the king, and it's my fault? Nothing. Ugh, I've got butterflies. Isn't that weird? Just, just to see this guy that I knew when I was 13 years old. No. Sophie, you were robbed of your first kiss the end of childish first love. Excuse me, the first kiss is what slams the sucker into gear. No, hardly. When you're used to riding a tricycle, it can be a little shocking the first time you pop the clutch on a Harley. Back at camp, they had this midsummer dance. I wanted to go with Mark, but he was, as usual, confined to his cabin. If you don't watch out, you could get that lodged in your trachea and die. Live on the edge, babe. Thought you'd be at the soccer. They were playing Kajagoogoo. You like Kajagoogoo. You don't. It was a sweet, wonderful moment. Pure romance. I couldn't even feel my feet. We were floating. We're talking there's a tricycle here. No sign of a Harley, not even a moped. Look, it was inevitable. Our next kiss wasn't quite so nice. So much for innocent romance. Obviously, Mark was getting advice from a drunken sailor. Oh. Ugh, it was all tongue and spit and grope. It ruined Claire. everything. God just freaked me out, you know? He didn't speak for the rest of the camp. That's too bad. Well, yes and no. It was also normal and healthy, because the pure childish first love I'd already started to romanticize was placed into an earthier sexual context. What? I mean, did he have a foot-long forked tongue? What's the big deal? Was a French kiss with a little minor groping? It was a necessary rite of passage, Trevor, mm -hmm. okay? One that Sophie never got. She needs it. She still thinks of Paul as the pure romantic figure. I, mean, I guess that's possible. We never got to the slimy stuff. I got close once, though. Forbidden territory. Down by the tracks where the big kids went to fool around. Are you cold? I think Lister was as nervous as me. Gil? Yeah? What if I kissed you? Would it be all right? I guess. Why? I don't think you're supposed to talk about it first. It's just supposed to happen. It was too soon after you asked me. You have to sort of take me by surprise. Oh. Paul, I hear my parents' car. My dad grounded me for a month. Still, it was almost the perfect romantic moment. <laughs> the best almost kiss I ever didn't have.
best almost kiss I ever didn't have. Maybe that's the point. No, I'm pretty sure the real point is for the lips to make actual contact, so go get him, Tigress. Oh, come on. As we all learned today, I still write about him. I, I have all these memories. They're perfect, you know? Claire, would it be crazy for me not to ruin all that? Not at all. Yeah, it would be crazy. Now, look, you can't leave without seeing this guy one more time. Trevor, this trip was just for fun, man. Snake farm. <laughs> Vipers. Constrictors, what do you say? You know, if we get there before 7 o'clock, we could see an anaconda eat a whole pig. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to smooth things out. Trevor, She's a Sophie scared. says she doesn't want to do it. You have no right to make her. Oh, really, Dr. Allen? Is that a policy you subscribe to? You don't want to force people into things, even for their own good? Is that your own personal belief? Look, fella, this is my decision. Trevor, get back in the car. You know what, Claire? You get back in the car. I got a job to do. Let's see if you can go five minutes without working against me. I'll time you. And you... Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit here and flap your wings and buck, buck, buck like a chicken? Do something all the way for once, Sophie. You want to do this. You really do. I bet my life on it. See this one thing through. You satisfied? Thirty-eight p.m. I'm sorry to say I can no longer in good faith state that Trevor is able to put innocent bystanders' interests ahead of his own. Me too, Gil, me too. Oh, this is gonna sound really strange, but I have a big favor to ask you. Yeah? I need to place childish romanticism into an earthier context. Kiss me. Unless you're married or something. I mean, I, I mean, it's okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, deities one mortals nil. Don't stare Ooh. directly into the source, folks, or you'll burn your red. Yes, I's the man. I's definitely the man. Well, technically, I's the god, but I's still definitely the man. Hold it right there, sport. State your business. Who the hell wants to know? The guy with the mouth-sized bar of soap. Look, Mr. Wister's my football coach. We were gonna run some patterns. I'm the quarterback for the Screaming Eagles. Mr. Lister is indisposed right now, but you are in luck. Many, many people have told me that I have great hands. I'm gonna go deep. You're going to launch it to me. You could have done something to stop Trevor just now. Maybe. <sighs> so why didn't you? Well, because maybe he had a point on some level. What, to bully Sophie like that? Sophie has this thing about success, you know, about being happy. Every time it gets close to her, she dodges it. I mean, if something good happens to a person, you should accept it. Be happy, not get all caught up in the what ifs and what abouts. You know what these first love stories all have in common? They end unhappily. I mean, Trevor, he's the lucky one. He never had a first love. Sure, I got the lead in the play, and all of a sudden, I was Mr. Poppy. Probably because I dumped Jackie and started going out with my co-star. Broke Jackie's heart. I transferred the next year. Never saw Jackie again. Goodly. There can't be too many of those in Chicago. Oh, no, it's been way too long. <laughs> Closure. Not just for talk show guests anymore. <laughs> it almost looks the same. Yeah, I only took it over from my parents a few months ago. They moved down to Florida. So what are you up to these days? I'm in the very glamorous world of social work. That's cool. I coordinate a job training program geared towards the homeless, ex-cons, welfare mothers, some peewee football coaching on the side. Can I show you something stupid? 
Something stupid isn't one of those nicknames a guy gives us. No. Because it would be a good one. I'll keep that in mind. You kept it all these years. Weird, huh? Since I never thought I'd speak to you again. You're not gonna believe this. I never stopped wearing this. Paul's locket? Paul's? And you would be... Oh, God. <laughs> Sophie. I thought you knew. It's me. Brian. Brian? The kid who was always jealous of me for taking away his big brother? You got it backwards. I wasn't jealous of you. I was jealous of Paul. And he didn't appreciate you like I did. But... Look, Paul told everybody he was going to kiss you. I mean, he had bets on it. The day after your family moved to Chicago, Paul was moving in on Maureen McKeon. And... I found this on the wash machine. I mean, the guy had forgotten to take it out of his pockets. I doubt he ever thought about it again. He was crazy about girls. And you? I was crazy about girls. Brian, we haven't seen each other in 15 years. I've, I've seen you three times. Road trips into the city when I heard you were playing. You're great, by the way. Come out of it just fine. I've seen what girls can do to guys. Oh, yeah? What can girls do to guys? Joe March, is fullback on our team. Great player. At least he used to be. You're way too young to give me the girls are bad for your legs speech. How they hurt your legs? Never mind. What happened to Joe? Jenny Ford happened. Uh-huh. Joe got real stupid. Acted like he didn't like her, but everyone could tell he did. How? Always trying to sit next to her. Uh-huh. Teasing her. The dude even egged her house. <laughs> Let's run some patterns. I gotta go, man. Oh, oh you want some of this? You don't want no! <laughs> Are those canary feathers sticking out of her mouth? So, can we just leave you here to rear children, darn socks, and churn butter? Hell no, I got a record to cut in L.A. You're coming with us after that R-rated shadow puppet show? Claire, you were right about Paul. I was? Yes, twice divorced, triple chin. He looked pretty good from where I was standing. Oh, no, that was Brian, the pesky little brother, living proof that nice guys finish last. Oh, well, that's too bad. No, you're not hearing me. Nice guys finish last. Oh, oh, okay. If you're a nice guy, you'd know. Come on, you guys, let's hit the road. I'm starved. What about Brian? Brian has always wanted to visit Hollywood, but it looks like the Screaming Eagles are going to the playoffs. So You're getting blown off for peewee football. Kids are short, the season's short, it's worth the wait. <laughs> Happy ending. Yeah, it's funny. <sighs> Gonna read a magazine, huh? Pick a good one. I'm just going to pretend to read. The magazine just helps sell it. Here's a good one. It's got a quiz. How to know if you are a stick in the mud. When riding in a limousine with your friends, you... A. Flash passing truckers. B. Run red lights and claim diplomatic immunity. Or C. Read about the long-term effects of NAFTA. Hmm. What was A again? Number two. When rewarding a guy who reunites sweethearts, you should... A. Give him a big warm hug. B, reduce him to a drooling zombie. Trevor, what do you think you know? I know what I know. 
By chemically removing his sex drive and rendering him psychologically malleable, Thorax B will end Trevor's psychotic delusions. Of course, recommitment to a safe and secure psychiatric facility will be necessary. Is that why you've been acting this way? Well, you know, call me sensitive. I just figured if you saw me hook Lister and Sophie up, you would see what a crime against humanity it would be to lock me up. So you thought you had something to prove to me? You're kind of like my pet mental health professional. I figure if I can't impress you, the folks back home will shock me till my feelings glow. I don't have any feelings, so it's just a metaphor. So your behavior was completely based on what you overheard? Right? Yes? Yeah. yeah. Hold this. Mm-hmm. You know, just because you tease someone doesn't mean you like them. Could mean you think they're just a big pain in the Watusi. Whatever you say. <laughs> Isn't it really late? You know, what do you think this is, Dallas Cowboy Training Camp? They sell eggs here. like to believe that you're not going to send me back to the funny farm, but how do I know that the men with the oversized butterfly nets are not waiting for me back in Chicago? Trust me. Trust you. You know that I trust you, Claire. But some people say that I suffer from delusions. Greeley is probably right. I've allowed my fondness for the patient to cloud my judgment. His enduring faith in the power of love, his unsinkable zest for life, his raw optimism, in a cynical time, Trevor Hale's philosophy is seductive, and I'm not always amused. Give me one last kiss. One last kiss. <laughs> Trevor Hale is delusional. Of that, I am certain. It is a delusion that has no off switch. It is reflexive and relentless. I firmly believe his dreams are of nymphs and satyrs. Certainly our overriding goal must be to cure this patient, to remove the block that prevents the real Trevor Hale from surfacing. But using drugs to artificially strip Trevor of his Cupid facade without removing the blocks leaves us with nothing. Neither the man he once was, nor the Roman god he claims to be. All right, this next song is a request. Trevor, this is for you. I used to be much cooler than this. <laughs> So I met with Dr. Greeley today. Uh-huh. Sounds like the only thing standing in between me and a rubber room is you. Yeah, well, the only thing standing between me and professional suicide is you. Don't, Don't screw, screw it up. Together. 